welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today I'm going to talk about a question many of you have been asking me. How can we alter all of these beautiful wedding gowns while we're distancing? Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal sewing niche? This channel is for you. Hit subscribe to become a part of the community. You have a beautiful gown quietly hanging on the rack with all the other beautiful wedding gowns. Your phone rings and on the line is a distraught bride. Her wedding plans have basically been turned upside down. She was planning to host 300 or more guests for her dream wedding. Right now with everything going on in the world, they've had to change their plans. Their plans are now a private, quiet elopement in their backyard with their parents, a preacher, their best friend, their pet dog. And next year, maybe next year when all this is over with, they're going to have a wonderful reception where she gets to wear the dress again so all of her friends and loved ones can see her in that beautiful gown that you have hanging in your studio. So now you're posed with this situation. How can you get this dress that doesn't really fit at all to fit good enough for this elopement style ceremony? How can you get it to fit good enough for pictures but also be adjustable for next year at the reception. Her weight may fluctuate. She may want a different hem length or perhaps even wear a different pair of shoes next year. You can do these alterations in solitude and you can arrange to leave the dress on your porch for her to pick it up. Those things are not a problem, but how are you going to have the fittings to get these alterations good enough? This is the specific scenario that I'm going to speak to today. We have an international community here at VST, so I can't speak about your local codes or basically how the laws are where you live. We're not going to get into that at all with the video. I'm just going to speak specifically to this situation. Then you can look at your local laws and adjust with these ideas that I give you so that you can serve your bride in the way that is legal and comfortable for you both. I really wanted to get this very needful information out to you guys without, you know, searching high and low for images for all of these examples. So do forgive, this is going to be kind of like a slideshow slash PowerPoint style talk that I have here today. I think you will find the information very much worth it though. This is also something with it being almost more of a podcast style that you can work or sew while I'm speaking. And every now and then, um, if you need to refer to a diagram, you can just look over at the screen and see exactly what I'm talking about. Let's start with altering the bodice for the fit. Um, ideally, you're going to have some pictures maybe of the bridal salon when the bride selected this dress and she had some pictures taken of her super excited in her new dress and they have the clamps in the back. You can glean a lot of information from that. You can see how much fabric they're clamping in the back and you're going to want to take up the dress just a general amount, say just an inch on each side or whatever um, you can tell by looking at those clamps or by looking at pictures where she's holding the dress to her body. Um, perhaps it's something as simple as her saying, it's just a little too tight or it's just a little too big. If you have a picture to go with that when she was first trying the dress on, that's going to help so, so much. 
The other thing is, of course, you could get her measurements um, with her wearing an unpadded yet supported bra. You could get her bust and waist measurements and measure that with the dress. Definitely put a little bit of ease in there and that should be good enough. As you know, many of the lace overlay gowns have lace that is hand stitched over the side seams to hide the seams. I do wanna speak specifically to that situation, um, especially with the economic times that many of our brides are facing, they're not going to want to pay to have that lace sewn down twice. So what I offer to them is I'll lift it up from, you know, maybe from the back, from the front, from the back. See how those white lines indicate? I would lift the lace like that and then kind of create a side seam and let the lace be inside the dress, um, but you know, within the seam allowance. So someday if she wants to go ahead and use that lace over the side seams again, she can. Uh, but as of now, and if she adjusts it for next year, she doesn't actually have to pay to have that lace hand sewn back down. Obviously, every bride is not facing economic hardship right now. Some people are actually making more money when they're in um, essential services. So I have seen some brides that are not being extremely budget conscious right now. And uh, to the contrary, I've also seen brides who are facing uh, very, very difficult economic struggles. So this is something you're going to want to kind of regroup and talk about the budget and the expectations with the bride again, just so you know you're working within what she is comfortable with. Another fit alteration for the bodice that is going to be important for you to pay attention to is the length of the bodice compared to the torso of the bride. If she's a petite bride or has a short waist, her gown is likely coming up way too high on her body, and that really does need to be fixed if you can. This is something that you can usually tell from the pictures that the gown is way too high on her. You can also usually tell by their height. If you're not sure of all this, if you can't get measurements from them that are detailed and that you know are accurate, you can always ask her to shoot you a text of a picture of her um, in kind of like exercise clothes that show the shape of her body. From that picture, you're easily gonna be able to tell. Is her torso short or long? If she has a short torso, you're gonna wanna go ahead and raise the waist on the gown. That's simple enough to do. I do have a video on that, so if you wanna look that up on how to raise the waist of a gown, um, there should be some detailed instructions in my video library. Another common alteration that you should be able to see just from her pictures from the store and also just knowing what her cup size is compared to looking at the bust angle of the gown. If the angle is not steep enough, you know you should just go ahead and put some moderately uh, pulling gather stitches in that edge. I also have an example of that in my video of how to fix a bodice that curls out. The final silver bullet to getting this to function well for her, for her elopement ceremony, is to attach some four inch wide elastic to her, um, where the boning is in her lining layer. If she doesn't have boning there at the princess seams, just attach it to the princess seams. Perhaps even put a waist stay in the front if there's not enough structure. Um, but you guys know what to do to really strengthen up the front panel of that dress so this is appropriate. Attach it there to the lining so that um, she can have a hook and eye fastener in the back, kind of like a bra strap with several rows to choose from so that she can adjust the fit and have this stretchy kind of um, inner corset like belt that can really help adjust the fit for her. 
Next, we're gonna move on to adjusting straps. Again, this is gonna be information that you can glean from a conversation with the bride. Were they extremely loose? Were they a little bit loose? Does she have pictures of when she selected the gown? You can also look a little bit at her height to know approximately how much you're gonna to have to take this up. Again, you're gonna take it up a little less than you think that you would need to. You're just gonna tab this up on the inside so that it's easily reversible and easily adjusted. This is also something that a very beginner sewer family member that's going to be there may be able to tighten up for her on the fly that day as well. But if she does not have that as an option, um, you can also make them adjustable by using clear matte finish elastic. Um, I do also have some information about that. I have a diagram of how you can use this to hold the shoulder straps up and together across the back of the shoulders. Um, that's in the community tab here. But basically, you can put some tailor's tacks at the front, the back, and the top of the shoulder seam. And uh, you're gonna be able to kind of channel that elastic through the, that top loop at the top shoulder seam. And at the front and the back where the tailor's ta tacks are, you can always just hook these straps to it. They hook just like a removable bra strap, and they also have that adjustable slide. I do recommend that you always keep um, a stash of these in your sewing room. Uh, we use them quite often. I will put a link to these in the description. They're very, very helpful. Now let's look at making an adjustable hem. Yes, this is quite possible and it's possible with many different types of hems. Now ideally, of course, it would be great if you lived in an area where all you had to do was maintain social distancing. All you had to do was stay six feet away. That six feet is pretty much your arm plus a yardstick. So it would be awesome, of course, if you could hold a fitting in person and you could just kind of point down to the floor at where her hem is and just kind of eyeball it, that is great. Um, easily um, an experienced seamstress should be able to press on that hem and say, okay, it's approximately three inches. I got it. But if you can't do that, we can do the hems with some basic math. Let's start with the premise that most wedding gowns are made for the height of a five foot ten person. Now what you're going to do if you have to alter this remotely is you're going to take that 5'10", then you're going to get the height of the bride. Let's say she's 5'4", and then you're going to take her heel height. Let's say she's going to wear a 3 inch heel. Now I'm not a math wizard, but this is pretty simple math. We're going to take the 5'4", plus the three inches, and we're going to reach the number of five foot seven inches. Of course, before you do this, you do want to make sure that she did not special order a petite gown, that it is indeed just a standard gown. So if it is, uh, we can go ahead and take the assumption that it's made for approximately five foot 10, and you're gonna subtract five foot seven, and that will give you a three inch difference. That is going to be the approximate amount that you need to hem off of. The now again, this should be confirmed in a conversation with the bride. If she tells you, no, the hem length was just fine, then definitely do not shorten it. So a safe hem amount, if you by measurement need to hem it by three inches, pandemically speaking, we're just gonna hem it by two inches. All right, I know what's coming in the comments section. I can tell you that people are going to say, this was a gross misuse of the adverb pandemically. Yes, I agree, but it kind of works. You get what I'm saying, right? Just roll with it, be nice. So back to the hem. Yes, we're going to hem the gown knowingly at least one full inch too long. The reason why we're going to do this is, one, she can hem it more later to get a fresh edge for a second wearing. Two, she is likely to be able to carry the hem as needed for an elopement. 
And ah, uh, that point says their him instead of her him. There's another error. Hey guys, if you're not going to leave a hateful comment about that, take one moment and hit the like button for me. I know you hear creators say that all the time, but it actually really makes a tremendous difference. Hit the like button, please, please, please. Thank you so much. All right, and point three, this is going to give us plenty of room for error, assuring that the dress won't be too short. We can always shorten it later, but it's a little harder, as you know from my previous video, to make a dress longer after you've cut it too short. Now, let's look at some specific hems and see how we can make them adjustable. Let's use this horsehair braid multi-layered hem as an example. You can always lift up this top layer and add a one inch pickup in the top. That's going to give you a little extra wiggle room. So if you were to do that, you can get more of an exact hem length for her. If you only hemmed it, say, the two inches, you can do the one inch pickup. That's easily reversible. You can even show them how to reverse it if it was a little too much. Um, but that's a super easy hem to adjust. In fact, you're going to want to remember that you can use pickups for many of these hems. All right, now let's look at the lace edged um, hems that has the swing lace applique on the edges. You're going to recognize some of this from my previous video about how to fix a hem that you cut too short. Okay, so let's say you're going to hem off, you're going to make it instead of the full three inches shorter you're going to do the two inches go ahead and remove the swing lace temporarily cut the two inches and then make sure you don't cut out the extra lace behind that swing applique um, I know sometimes when we hem these gowns with that applique, we put them on and we cut the extra behind it just to get that pop uh, through the lace design but right now we're going to go ahead and let the lace skirt remain behind that swing lace all the way up to the little picky up points between the swings of the lace and that's going to give you some wiggle room for later and finally for a rolled hem don't replace it with that teeny tiny rolled hem go ahead and leave a little more hem allowance in there certainly don't do a surged rolled hem right now there's almost nothing to work with later on that um, most brides are not going to mind the look for an elopement of having a wider rolled hem if it's pressed nicely and your tension is loose enough you're not going to have puckers to where that seam is going to be super obvious as far as bustling goes that's fairly easy to work out you can just hang the dress on a door frame and um, go by that while you're pinning the bustle and choosing it most brides aren't too picky about what type of bustle you put in for an elopement they may not even use it for an elopement a lot of my brides are just completely passing up on the bustle for now and they're going to conquer that stage of the alterations next year for the reception quite obviously I have left out the option of having the bride measured and using a dress form that is set up for her figure and height um, that is quite obvious that you can alter that way but I know many of you either don't have adjustable dress forms or you don't have a way of getting her accurate measurements and if you already know how to do that then um, you don't need me to tell you about it <laughs> right also, um, to be able to alter that way would be an entire video in and of itself, and I did not uh, want to get into that one right now. I wanted to show you these other tips and tricks that are less commonly spoken. Once again, please don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. It really does help me, and I know it only takes a second and doesn't cost you anything, but still, just, just taking that moment, I appreciate it so very much. I hope this video has helped you, and I hope you are all being safe. As usual, I will continue to be very active in the comments section, so if you have any questions, let me know down there and I'll see if I can help you. Thank you so much for watching. Please share this on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you roam. I know what you're looking for. 
You've been sewing for years, but you want to get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools, the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.